right, welcome back to the Build Live stage. I am here with my buddy Ian from AMD. You are here to talk to us a little about uh, some hugging face models, yeah? That's right, that's right. We're gonna show you a couple of demos. Oh, I'm uh, all about demos. Let's do this, <laughs> let's do this. Awesome, thanks, Joey. Good morning, everyone. Before we dig into the demos, I just wanted to remind everybody that if you're using PyTorch, TensorFlow, or JAX, you can use your notebooks or scripts that will just run on AMD. Same with inferencing engine, so VLLM, Onyx, also works out of the box. And of course, we understand that you need more than just frameworks. You need a bunch of upstream stuff. You need a bunch of experimentation stuff, distributed training. All of that is enabled and works on AMD. So again, this session all about hugging face. All about hugging face. So we have a great partnership with them. Um, we have what's called CI/CD integration. Uh -huh. What it means is whenever a new model gets uh, onboarded in hugging face, it gets tested on AMD infrastructure. Okay. So I have. I would be remiss if I didn't warn you that I'm going to be copy and pasting a lot of hugging face demos. But that's kind of the point to show you <laughs> that you can just copy paste and it'll run on AMD. Okay, you ready? Okay, I'm ready. Here we go. Okay, we're going to start with ResNet. Oh, hang on. Customers using smaller models like <laughs> ResNet still? Yeah, good point. So back in the day, 25 million parameters was huge. Uh, clearly not the case anymore. But convolutions is pretty much still state of the art. So okay, fair convolutions enough. are to images what attention is to tokens. Yep, fair okay, enough. Okay, so here we go. So I'm using our developer cloud, sporting a MI300. And so what we're going to do is we're going to tab over to Hugging Face. So there's my notebook. Mm -hmm. And just to show you guys that I didn't modify the code, I'm going to go over and copy it from Hugging Face. And we're going to go and paste that into the demo. And straight then, as it is. Yes. Just straight no copy mod paste. No mods. If you look carefully, you can see we call it torch.cuda, even though it's AMD. OK, so what uh, it recognizes a tiger cat. I'm not a cat expert, but let's see what the image was. Looks like a tiger cat. Do you think it's a tiger cat? I'm not a cat expert either, but yeah, let's go with it. Let's go with it, Ian. <laughs> awesome. OK, so the next model is a little bigger. We're at 600 million parameters. Uh, this is from our friends at Meta, the AI lab. It's called BART, uh, and it's 600 million parameters. So Real quick, before we jump into this, can we talk about the difference between Bart yeah. and Bert? And then can we talk about the names the a name, little bit? Yeah, no, there's a little <laughs> history there. Uh, so transformers come into three flavors. You get encoder-only models like Bert. Okay. You get decoder models like GPT. And then you get encoder-decoder models like Bart. So in terms of the name, um, the first notable NLP model was actually published by Allen Institute right here in Seattle. And they named it Elmo. And so ah. Bert came out after Elmo, so I think there's a Sesame Street theme going on. I'm um, waiting for Big Bird. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Let's see who does that first. OK, so again, we're going to be boringly copying information or a code from Hugging Face. So this is summarization. So we're going to take a large block of text, and we're going to squeeze it into, I think in this case, 130 param uh, key words. So let's look at that. OK, here I have to admit, I did modify the code. Ah. I did change it so it's easier to read. So I just moved the print statement into a separate line. Uh, but otherwise, it's exactly the same. So we're going to run the notebook. It's going to load the model weights. It's going to squeeze this article into 130 characters. And you'll see what that looks like. Okay, this is, by the way, a very interesting article about somebody that got married 20 times in one year, but you know, I didn't pick the example. What, 20 times in a year? Yes, so there's the summary. Okay, <laughs> the next example is going to be translation. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I have to admit I modified this one too. The example on hugging face is Arabic. I can't vouch for that, but as being a South African, I can vouch for Afrikaans. Oh, OK. So, so what we did is we took this example again from Hugging Face. You can see they actually have two examples. So I'm going to take the Arabic to English example. I'm going to modify it to be Afrikaans to English. Let's see what that says. So the Afrikaans says, 
Hierdie is a belangrike konferensie vir programmeerders. Which I trust you. You trust me? Okay, I do. So what that means in English is, this is an important conference for programmers. So, ah, that works. Very good, very good. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Okay, so cranking it up to 1.5 billion parameters, we're going to look at a use case called ASR, or Automatic Speech Recognition. Okay. This is really cool if you're doing uh, call centers. Yeah. Uh, I think we're getting transcribed live as well. Um, you could do sentiment analysis on the text. Uh, you can do meeting notes, and then you can combine it with a summarization, so you can take the whole big meeting notes and compress it into small, concise notes. So, again, going over to our friends at Hugging Face. And we're going to pick the model from OpenAI called Whisper. Turns out one of my friends built this model. Oh, there you go. And it works really well. So again, copy and paste. It's boring by design, folks. <laughs> ease so gonna, of use, ease we call it. Use. Ease there of use. Go. And so in this case, it's going to take an audio file, and it's going to listen to the file and transcribe it. I actually have the uh, original file in the, at the bottom of the notebook. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the audio to work. But if you ask me, I can play it for you, and you can vouch that that is the right transcription. I vouch for you. you we, vouch we, for me. We, we saw it on the side, awesome. so it's all good. I all vouch good, for you. all good. OK, so now we're going into 3 billion parameters with a small language model. All right. Hang on. I'm, I'm going I'm to hold I'm gonna pump the pull you back in. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Pump the brakes a little bit. I've heard of large language models, yeah. now small language models, yep. find small here. Yeah. So LLMs, obviously, you mentioned large language models. Small language models are typically sub-5 billion parameters, but they're actually remarkably good at some workloads. And so they have a very high efficiency in terms of their accuracy scores over the parameters. And so the one okay. we're going to use is one that Satya mentioned yesterday. So it's the Phi model. So let's go ahead and look at that. So we're using Phi 3. Going to go ahead and just show you this is the instruct model. So what it means, it's been fine-tuned for a question and answering session. And so we're actually going to ask it to solve some linear algebra. So I don't know if you could do this without the model, but take a look at it. It's asking us 2x plus 3 is 7. What is x? I, I failed algebra. Oh, yeah, yeah. OK, so there we go. It's loading the shards. And now it's reasoning. And there you go. It says x is 2. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, that's, that's what I would have. That's, that's exactly my answer. Yeah, gotcha, I'm sticking gotcha. to it. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. OK. So 6.6 .6 billion parameters allows us to get into text to image. Very okay. fun stuff. A lot of people play with this a lot. Um, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go over to Hugging Face. And the model we're going to use is called SDXL Turbo from Stability AI. Really nice model. OK. Um, you know, everybody loves to play with text to image. So it's a very simple snippet. And uh, the prompt in this case is a cinematic shot of a baby raccoon wearing an intricate Italian priest robe. You know what that looks like? <laughs> You know, I've always wondered, Ian, there you go. what so a raccoon in a priest outfit looks there you like. Go. Now, the question is, why didn't you create, I don't know, like a DJ super group <laughs> focused on Yacht Rock? Yes. Instead, we get a raccoon wearing I, a yeah, yeah, I, I actually know. wanted to do a stellar co-host and see what that looks like. <laughs> well, you won't get yeah. me. Let's just be clear about that. <laughs> OK, so really cool stuff. Again, all running without modification. Okay, so let's keep going, and we seem to have lost the motion. Let's see. Can we... Okay, so text to video is next. Um, this is a pretty big model, about 11 billion. And um, wow, okay, sorry guys, the keyboard's gone. But uh, in this case, we're going to go over the same thing. We're going to go over to Hugging Face. Uh, this is a more uh, Interesting model. You can see the code is a little more complex. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an animated GIF, so video from text prompts. So if you like the raccoon, you're going to love this one. Uh, it's actually a simpler prompt. So we're going to ask the model to create a girl that is smiling. Um, and so let's see what Byte Dance comes up with. 
So there you go, it's generating, and it's going to drop us an animated GIF file. So if I go and look at that, you should be a girl smiling. So let's see. There you go. So pretty cool stuff, you know, the ability to create a video from text is next level for sure. So are we going to be able to do full video, like full movies? Can like, you imagine? I, I, I'm, I'm thinking of something like an explosion going off in the background as yeah. the two of us come walking off stage, yeah, yeah, with right? Smoke, can we put motion. that right into the model, get that oh, out right yeah. now, Ian? Is that, we'll get can right we do on that? that. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to do that. <laughs> do the slow motion walk. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so that was all inference, so now we're going to look at training. Of course, that also works. We're using Hugging Face's trainer. So in this case, we're going to go over to GitHub repo from Hugging Face, and we're going to grab the examples they have for PyTorch language models. And what we're going to do is we're going to train GPT-2 real quick. So I'm going to go and copy this snippet of code, and I'm going to go over to my console, and I'm going to go ahead and run this. So what we're doing now is we're going to pre-train GPT-2, and okay. we're using the Wikitext data set. It's okay. using one GPU right now, so you can see it's displaying the model architecture, it's displaying the data shards, and it's actually going to start training here in a second. There you go, so zero. There we go, we start ticking and we're training yep. GPT. Copy, paste. Very Copy, basic. paste, train <laughs> the models. Yes. Okay, so we have a lot more examples out on our blogs. So if you want to go and look at them, there's examples from more stable diffusion, there's reinforcement learning, a ton of other examples. So please go ahead and visit our blogs at rockham.blogs.amd.com. And I wanted to finish with this slide. So Sacha mentioned the availability of the MI300X. I'm seeing hardware here. This makes me all yes, excited. Yes, that makes you happy yeah, with this. Yeah, I love a data center. I love me a oh. set of hardware. So this is a really cool piece of hardware. So the models we did today was about 11 billion parameters. Okay. Okay. And we did one GPU. With the MI300, you can load up to 70 billion parameters. So you can take a Llama 70B model and load it on one GPU. And you have eight of those on this instance. You can run eight different Llama 70Bs. Or you can say, I want to take a big model, something like Meta's Llama 3 400B, and deploy that on a single instance. So it's really good to get large models up and running without having to worry about clustering and networking. So really good stuff. So please go ahead and check those out. That is so cool. And I think that's it for our session. Thanks, everybody. So Ian, before you go, uh -huh. I, I want to I ask a couple things. Sure. As you've been here, you've been here throughout the course of the event, you've been chatting with developers. What is kind of that number one thing you want developers to take away from the announcements at AMD? Is, yeah. I've, you've showed a lot. Yeah. Is there something that's really standing out and, and a lot of folks are asking yeah. about? I would say the important thing is to note that the software frameworks just work. So there's no porting required, there's no lift. You can take your existing notebooks, your existing scripts, and you can run them on AMD. And that's important because a lot of the other accelerators require transcoding and all kinds of pre-compiling scripts. Our stuff just works out of the box, and it's fast too. Really fast. Really fast. And you saw that by leveraging the hugging face examples yeah, exactly. and, and the copy paste apart, you know, for from some language changes, right? So yeah. that we could do some of yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, of course, everybody, you want to check out uh, rocm.blogs.amd.com. And of course, hey, if you want to learn more about AMD and our awesome feature partners, we have this really cool part on the build.microsoft website. Go to that feature partner section, click the button, check out all the cool offerings. And if you're sitting here, come talk to this guy. He's pretty cool <laughs> to chat with. We've got more for Microsoft Build coming up. Thank you.